Susan says that you guys uh, would like to see where we keep our wildlife ambassadors, which is the peregrine falcon Helen and my Harris Hawk Bell. And again, because they get a lot of attention and we have them acclimated to human activities, they sleep in the house. And I would love, if I had a big enough house, Scout would sleep in the house. But Scout is far too large to sleep in the house, so he has to have his own chamber outside. But come on down. Now this is my unfinished, messy basement. But this is, uh, works well for taking care of the critters. Good morning, kids. How's my babies today? And so we have Helen, the peregrine falcon, and Belle, the Harris hawk. And this is where they spend their nights. They go out when the weather is, is nice. They go outside all day long, but they do spend the day, or the evenings here with us. Now, we do handle them a little bit differently because they, they are our wildlife ambassadors and they have to get used to a routine. Now this is called a hood and this is for Belle, this is her hood. And this is for stressful situations like um, driving in a car or we're doing a show and there's lots of activity and movement and lots of noise with hundreds of people around. We don't want her to get over stress so we can cover her eyes with a hood and, and then she can just relax and, and things don't frighten her. But the truth of the matter is, you have to teach them how to wear these. And a lot of falconers will get a bird and they don't hood them regularly, and so the bird will start refusing the hood, then it becomes a real battle. Uh, and, and so if you, if you hood them as a routine, then it's far easier. Now that's not to say that Belle doesn't squawk uh, a little bit about the hood. Uh, because she doesn't need it, especially just picking her up and taking her outside. But it's part of the routine. It's part of our daily routine, and so we always have to do that. It's, it's just, just like a dog wearing a collar, and sometimes, <clears throat> you know, you go to put a leash on a dog, and the dog says, I don't want the leash. But you, if you do it anyway, it, then it's, the next time it's easier. And so that's what we always do with Belle. Hi, oh, sweet baby girl. Are you my lady? Are you my pretty lady? Huh? You are. And see, this is what I don't do with the wild ones. I do not get nose to nose. I don't cuddle with them. I don't pet them. I don't socialize with them because they're wild. We want them to stay wild. Belle, on the other hand, is my friend. And so she and I spend a great deal of time together just socializing so that she's very, very comfortable with me. And yes, you are. You're very, very comfortable with us. So shall we get going here? And I know Susan's in the room, but you'll be a good girl anyway, won't you? Yes, you will. You'll be my good girl anyway. And so we take the hood, put it over her face, just like that. We gently snug it. Now, do, do we have to do that to just take her outside? We don't. We don't have to hood her just to take her outside, put her on her perch. Um, that's, but this is part of the routine that we do every single day so that if we're in a situation, let's, let's say we're, we're in a situation and I'm out in the field and, I'm fly, and she's out chasing rabbits, we're having a great time, and, and, and a whole bunch of ATVs and motorcycles come racing across the desert toward us. That could be tragic. That could, that could terrify her, that could, that could chase her away. You could, she could be flying to a fence, she could fly into a power line. She could, I mean, there's a lot of dangers out there for her. And so if, if a dangerous situation is starting to occur, being able to just pop that hood on will save her life. And so the hood's a very, very important piece of, of equipment that we use. <clears throat> and the, the more that you hood them, the more they're used to the hood, the, the better it is for them. Uh, it helps to keep them safe, keeps their stress levels down. And so, you know, any, anyone who, who is a falconer who works with these guys on a regular basis, if, you, if your bird doesn't hood, um, you, you run a much, much higher risk of tragedy occurring because this is, this is, this is safety. 
This is one of our safety measures to keep her from becoming injured or overly stressed. Anyway, come on, baby. Let's go out. Let's get you out. Shut the gate? Nope. Just leave it open. Just leave it open. She's fine. We running? Yep. Okay, this is our little weathering yard for, for Belle. And she just sits on this little bow perch. It does just fine. Now, I've seen an awful lot of falconers that don't know how to tie a falconer's knot. And so let me kind of show you uh, be, how to tie a falconer's knot. It's very, very simple. Get in here close. Get it, yep. Here, here's the ring that, that we tie the knot to. We loop just like this. I go from the bottom to the top, loop it through the ring, give about, oh, about a foot, 10 inches to a foot of, of, of line here. And then what we want to do is we want to wrap it around, go underneath, wrap it around, all the way around, so you come out above and you can see that, what that does is when you do this, it kind of makes a loop here and a loop there. Does that make sense to everybody? It makes two loops. And so you come all the way over. When you, when you do this, you come all the way up and you put it through. The, the uh, closest loop to you, put it, and so you put this knot right through the closest loop. And then once you get through the closest loop, except for I've got a little extra bend in there, but that's okay, let me, do her again to make it a little easier. But you can it's see it again because it's hard to see. Okay, so we go around all the way, all the way once, go to the top of the, the thing here, go all the way over the top, and then push it through the loop that you have in your, have in your hand and pull. And you pull it nice and snug. You can slide it in a little bit. Now I like about an inch to, an, to two inches of loop here. And then, and then you put the tail of it right through, and that is nice and secure. And as she pulls against it, all it does is tighten the knot. And so she can, cannot loosen that up or pull it away. <clears throat> and that's a very, very secure, we call that the falconer's knot. And so one more time, because people uh, have a hard time understanding, okay? We go in from, from the bottom up, and then from the bottom up, we wrap it around. And I like to put my finger right here as I wrap around. We wrap it around, go over the top, and then push it, push the the leash through the through the the loop that was in your hand, and and then pull it nice and tight. You can take it down a little bit if you want, but make sure it's it's good and snug. And then I like this at about about an inch, inch and a half, and then push it through. And now you have a falconer's knot. Now she's perfectly safe. Now, if you, you notice, she, she reached over and touched me. This shows you how sharp her talons are. Oh. Okay. That is how sharp they are. I didn't even feel it. They're just razor blades. Uh, and so that's, that's the way you want her talons to be, is just razor blades. Uh, and so I get cut and scratched on a daily basis. That's completely normal. And then we unhood her. Hi, sweet girl. Oh, my pretty lady. Yes, you are. You're such a sweetheart. And then we let her have her breakfast and relax in a bath pan full of water. Yeah, hello. You're wagging your tail. You're being a sweet girl. Yes, you are. So that's how you tie a falconer's knot. This is where we, how we perch them out. We get out here about once a week and and wash off the carpets to get to, to clean it and fresh water every day. Um, all part of part of the, the daily chores. Now back in for Helen. Yep, back in for Helen. Now 
Let me scout. Well, now we're coming down to take Helen out and get her out on her perch. Come on back in to our unfinished basement room. Now, Helen is a little bit different. Helen is mostly blind. Her vision is extremely poor. Now, I didn't get her until she was, um, oh, four or five months old. So she was never hooded. And so that's a little bit late to start them. And we don't want to stress her, but her vision is so poor that when we transport her or when we're doing shows with her, she can't see well enough anyway. Uh, and so uh, we're, we don't worry about hooding Helen uh, as we do with hooding Belle or hooding Scout. And so we just kind of come up and say, hi, sweet baby girl. Come here, sweetie. Yes, such a good girl. So she just steps right up just like Belle does. Hi, beauty lady. Are you such a good girl? And Helen is a bit of a, dis of a, of a genetic disaster. She really is. I mean, we love her to death because of her nearly blind. She sees a little bit, but very little. Um, she can't fly. But she can't be allowed to fly. She could fly, but she can't be allowed to do so because she'd hit walls, she'd hit buildings, she'd hit power lines. She can't see well enough to do that. And she would starve to death because she couldn't find anything to hunt as well. And so not only does she have the, the vision issues, as you can see here, if you look, look on her, her left side, her feathers on, her, on the leading edge of her wing line up uh, like they're supposed to. This is where, how they're supposed to be lined up. But you can see over here, the feathers are out of alignment. And mm -hmm. it, Once in a while when the feather is broken, that's normal, but it's hers are all the time. Right? Yeah, hers are like this all the time. And so, again, a little genetic issue because of that. Now, as you can see her on her feet right here, all of her talons all turn down. And that's very, very important because that's how they grasp their prey, except for this one, which turns up. And so in the wild, that would, that would be an issue because she can't grab anything with that toe because her talon turns upward. And so she's kind of a little genetic mess. You, you are. You're very sweet. You're such a good little girl. Not as messed up as the white-bellied bald eagle. Not as, not as messed up as the white-bellied bald eagle. But you know, with her um, genetic disabilities, you know, she, she would never, ever, ever have survived in the wild. And so that's why she's with us as one of our wildlife ambassadors. Uh, and that's why we named her Helen. We named her after Helen Keller. You know, Helen Keller was deaf and blind, but was an amazing ambassador for the disabled. And our little Helen here is mostly blind, but again, she's an amazing ambassador for wildlife. And so that's where she gets her name Helen from. So Helen, she, I know you're anxious to go outside. She wants to get to her breakfast. So come on, Helen, let's go get you your breakfast. You know, remember I said that, that it's routine, everything's routine, and if we don't follow the routine, it puts them a little bit off. And so she's used to me just walking down, picking her up, walking outside, taking her to her perch and, uh, and where she has her breakfast. And so, if we, yes, if we break that routine, you're gonna tell everybody, huh? I've slowed you down too much. If we break that routine, then they're, they're unhappy about that. How oh, sweet girl. Such a pretty girl. And she's molting too. I see some she, oh yeah. missing feathers. Yeah, she's got some brand new ones starting to come in. That's what they do in the summertime. Yep. Okay. And again, Helen, she, she knows that, like I said, with, with her terrible vision, she can only see food within a, about three or four feet. And so I kind of bring her down where she can see her, her breakfast. 
Then she jumps down and grabs her breakfast. That's her, her routine. And, uh, and then again, another falconer is not the same exact kind. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but we're just gonna tie it here correctly. Pull it tight, reduce the noose a little bit, slide the tail through the hole, and there she is. And so sweet little Helen will just uh, sit out here in the nice shady weather and have her breakfast and relax. You've got someone with you. Yes, I brought Susan with me and that's broke disturbing. Huh, broke the routine. Yeah, when it's just me putting her out, she just immediately goes to having breakfast, but she says, I don't understand why there's somebody pointing a black thing in my face. And I'm still three feet back. Yeah. But she knows there's, there's something different. Now that's called a rouse, where they shake their feathers like that, and that's kind of like stretching. They, they shake their feathers in that way to actually help um, realign all the feathers back into their appropriate positions because feathers can get out of place and they just like a big a big rouse and they fluff up and and their feathers then lay back into their correct positions and and then they're ready to relax pretty pretty girl now we we talked about the um, the kestrel falcons and their black eyes because all falcons have black eyes and you can see bell has those beautiful black eyes you can see the stripe though it covers her whole head that i talked about with the peregrine falcon you know, it's a very bold stripe and it covers the entire head. So we call that a helmet instead of just a stripe, but that's, but it's in essence the same thing. And so the Kestrel Falcon and the Peregrine Falcon are very, very much built the same, uh, but the Peregrine Falcon is considered a large falcon where the Kestrel Falcon is the smallest falcon in North America. Okay, sweetie, talk to you later. Anyway, that's the morning routine to get the critters out other than, you know, shoveling and cleaning cages and watering and you know, scrubbing out bath pans. And you are welcome to visit our website for more information and biographies about Scout the Golden Eagle, Bell the Harris Hawk, and Helen the Peregrine Falcon. At our site, we have more videos as well as photos and PDF documents for download. You can also download a ringtone of Bell the Harris Hawk. <coughs> Martin the Human and our wildlife ambassadors are available for in-person educational wildlife presentations throughout the Southwest, as well as for live stream digital presentations worldwide. <laughs> <laughs>